Eitaibashi Bridge Collapse In the heart of Old Edo, the Eitaibashi Bridge stood as a proud symbol of celebration and connection. First built in 1698 under the order of Shogun Tokugawa Tsunayoshi to honor his 50th birthday, it stretched about 200 meters long and 6 meters wide, held aloft by 30 wooden poles. Its height allowed trading ships to sail beneath, and for more than a century it linked the bustling city with Fukugawa. But on September 20th, 1807, joy turned to horror. That day marked the grand festival at Fukugawa Tomioka Hachimangu Shrine, the first with new floats in 12 years. Crowds surged across the bridge, which was already weakened with worn-out planks and neglected repairs. Just as the procession swelled, a feudal lord's boat passed underneath, halting movement. When the warden gave the all-clear, thousands rushed forward at once. Near the Fukugawa side, the bridge buckled in two places, sending more than 1,400 people plunging into the Sumida River. Many drowned. Their bodies never recovered. The tragedy unfolded like a nightmare. People packed the span as tightly as a modern commuter train, shoving forward unaware the structure had already given way. Those behind pushed blindly, driving even more into the river. Only the swift action of an official, Watanabe Kozeman, who blocked the entrance with sword drawn, stopped the stampede from claiming additional lives. His intervention became legend, retold in literature decades later. After the disaster, boats scoured the waters for survivors, and temporary hospitals lined the shores. Eventually, the bridge was rebuilt by the Bakufu government. By 1897, it became the first iron bridge in Tokyo, rebuilt again in 1926 as the city's first earthquake-proof bridge after the Great Kanto Earthquake. Declared a national treasure in 2007, the Aitaibashi stands today as a solemn reminder that moments of joy can turn to catastrophe in an instant. Ponte das Barcas Collapse In March 1809, the city of Porto turned into the scene of one of the most haunting bridge disasters in European history. As French troops stormed into the city from the north, panic drove thousands of defenders and civilians toward the Ponte das Barcas, a floating bridge linking Porto to Vila Nova de Gaia across the Douro River. What began as a desperate escape quickly unraveled into catastrophe. The exact cause remains disputed. Some accounts describe the bridge collapsing under the sheer weight of the crowd, sending terrified people tumbling into the river below. Others suggest the middle of the bridge had been opened. Its design allowed this to let ships pass, and in the chaos, fleeing civilians were pushed straight into the water. Either way, the results were devastating. The tragedy was compounded by the brutality of the battlefield. Portuguese cavalry, retreating in disarray, slashed at civilians with their swords to force a path, while others were crushed beneath their horses' hooves. Overhead, artillery fire rained down. Ironically, Portuguese gunners positioned at Serra do Pilar fired across the river toward Porto, but their shots struck more civilians than enemy soldiers. From the opposite bank, French cannons added to the carnage. In the midst of this chaos, survival was brutal. Witnesses later claimed that some desperate souls managed to cross the broken bridge only by stepping over the bodies of the dead and drowning. When the dust settled, French troops, who had forced the collapse with their pursuit, ended up laying planks across the shattered bridge to advance, and, in a strange twist, even helped rescue some survivors from the waters of the Douro. The Ponte das Barcas tragedy lives on as a dark chapter in Porto's past, a collision of war, fear, and human desperation that turned a crossing into a mass grave. Dixon Bridge Disaster Collapse On May 4, 1873, a Sunday afternoon in Dixon, Illinois, turned into horror when the Truesdale Bridge collapsed over the Rock River. A crowd of 150 to 200 spectators had packed the bridge to witness the baptism of six new church members. As hymns filled the air, a sudden crack echoed, and within seconds, the iron spans gave way. People plunged 18 feet into water 15 to 20 feet deep, trapped under a mangled cage of iron latticework. The toll was staggering. 46 people killed and at least 56 injured, making it one of the deadliest road bridge disasters in U.S. history. Nearly 80% of the victims were women, many weighed down by the heavy dresses and petticoats of the era. Two young sisters, just ages six and four, were among the youngest victims, leaving their widowed mother with no children. Rescue efforts were frantic. Townspeople threw ropes and planks into the river, and one man, William Daly, managed to save 16 lives. But for many, the river became a grave, bodies pinned beneath twisted iron just six inches below the surface. The bridge itself had been a point of pride just four years earlier, costing $75,000, equivalent to more than $2 million today. It was hailed as a modern marvel when dedicated in 1869, yet concerns had surfaced before. A similar Truesdale Bridge in Elgin had collapsed twice, 
once injuring up to 40 people, but warnings were ignored. After the Dixon collapse, blame fell heavily on the flawed design, with newspapers calling it the patent death trap and the Great Bridge murder. In the aftermath, grief overtook Dixon. Schools closed, businesses stopped, and church bells tolled endlessly as funeral after funeral passed through town. In just one day, 13 processions filled the streets. The tragedy left not only broken families, but also a permanent scar on engineering history, forcing America to rethink how bridges were built and who was trusted to build them. Quebec Bridge Collapses The Quebec Bridge stands today as both an engineering marvel and a memorial to tragedy. Stretching 3,238 feet long and 95 feet wide, it carries trains, cars, and pedestrians across the St. Lawrence River. But its completion in 1919 came only after two catastrophic collapses that claimed 88 lives. The first collapse struck on August 29, 1907. Construction crews had been working for four years when the bridge suddenly gave way, plunging into the river in just 15 seconds. Out of 86 men on site, 75 were killed, making it the deadliest bridge construction disaster in the world. Among them were 33 Mohawk steelworkers from Kanawake, remembered with steel beam crosses at their burial site. Investigations revealed the cause, fatal miscalculations. The design was so flawed that the bridge was literally too heavy to support its own weight. Tragedy struck again on September 11, 1916, when engineers attempted to raise the center span into place. A casting failure caused the massive section to fall, killing 13 more workers. Sabotage rumors spread. World War I was underway. But the truth was simple, another engineering oversight. When the bridge was finally completed at a staggering cost of $22 million, over $375 million in today's money, it carried not just trains and vehicles, but the weight of two disasters. Its 1,801-foot cantilever span remains the longest in the world, an achievement born from sacrifice. In recent years, the bridge has faced another enemy, corrosion. Nearly 60% of its surface is rusted, and restoration costs are pegged at $200 million. In 2024, the Canadian government repurchased the bridge for a symbolic $1, pledging $1 billion over 25 years for repairs. What began as a story of ambition and failure now continues as one of preservation, ensuring that this bridge, built on loss, endures as both infrastructure and monument. Mirandi Bridge Collapse On August 14, 2018, Genoa's skies opened with a fierce rainstorm, and within minutes, one of Italy's most vital arteries turned into a graveyard. At exactly 11.36 a.m., a 690-foot section of the Ponte Mirandi crumbled into the Polcevera River, taking with it 43 lives. Eyewitnesses swore the bridge was struck by lightning moments before it gave way. Between 30 and 35 cars and three trucks plummeted, some slamming into warehouses below, others into railway tracks. The only saving grace, many of those warehouses were nearly empty because it was the eve of Ferragosto, Italy's biggest summer holiday. The victims came from all walks of life and across borders. 29 Italians, 4 French citizens, 3 Chileans, 2 Albanians, and individuals from Colombia, Jamaica, Moldova, Peru, and Romania. Among the survivors was Davide Capello, a former Serie A goalkeeper whose car plunged 100 feet before wedging between debris, allowing him to walk away almost unscathed. His survival was nothing short of miraculous. The collapse instantly exposed Italy's crumbling infrastructure. Reports revealed that corrosion had eaten into the bridge's southern stays, a critical flaw in a structure already carrying more than its fair share of traffic. The company managing the bridge, Atlantia SPA, controlled by the Benetton family, waited two days to issue a public statement, a silence that fueled public outrage. Stocks of Atlantia plummeted 25% within days. By June 2019, the wreckage was demolished and a new hope began rising. The replacement, designed by Renzo Piano, was inaugurated on August 3, 2020. Still, scars remain. To this day, the Ponte Mirandi collapse is remembered not only as a structural failure, but also as a human tragedy, one that turned a symbol of modern engineering into a reminder of how neglect can cost more than money. It costs lives. Sunshine Skyway Bridge Collapse On the morning of May 9, 1980, Tampa Bay was cloaked in heavy rain when the unthinkable happened. The 606-foot freighter MV Summit Venture, caught in a sudden squall with winds topping 70 miles per hour, veered off course and slammed into a support pier of the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. In a matter of seconds, more than 1,200 feet of roadway, nearly a quarter mile, crumbled into the bay. At 7.38 a.m., cars, a truck, and a Greyhound bus plunged 150 feet into the water. 35 people lost their lives that day, 
some drivers managed to stop in time, their vehicles left teetering on the edge. A photograph of Richard Hornbuckle's Buick Skylark, halted just two feet from the abyss, remains one of the most haunting images of the tragedy. Among the chaos, there was one miraculous escape. Wesley McIntyre's Ford Courier pickup fell with the roadway, struck the hull of the freighter, and then sank. Somehow, McIntyre clawed his way free and surfaced, where rescuers pulled him aboard the very ship that caused the collapse. Four years later, he won a $175,000 settlement worth about $530,000 today. The pilot guiding the summit venture, John Laro, was later exonerated. Investigations revealed that a violent microburst had reduced visibility to nothing and even rendered the ship's radar useless. Despite desperate maneuvers, full reverse engines, and an emergency anchor drop, the 20,000-ton vessel couldn't fight the storm's fury. The main support pier held firm, but a weaker secondary pier crumpled under the impact, dooming the span. The Sunshine Skyway collapse remains one of the deadliest bridge disasters in U.S. history, a chilling reminder of how a single moment of violent weather, combined with structural vulnerability, can turn an ordinary morning commute into catastrophe. Baltimore Bridge Collapse The night of March 26, 2024, delivered a stunning blow to the Baltimore metropolitan area when the main spans of the Francis Scott Key Bridge dramatically crumbled into the Patapsco River at 1.28 a.m., Eastern Daylight Time. This catastrophic collapse was triggered by the container ship Dali, a 980-foot-long vessel, which lost power and control, veering out of the shipping channel and colliding with one of the bridge's main piers at an estimated speed of 8 knots, or about 9.2 miles per hour. The moment of impact was devastating because the key bridge, the second-longest continuous truss bridge in the U.S., was fracture-critical, meaning it lacked redundancy. So the failure of a single main support caused the entire structure to give way within seconds. Tragically, six members of a maintenance crew working on the bridge, whose vehicles were either on break or attempting to stop traffic, were killed. Two other workers were rescued from the icy 47-degree Fahrenheit River water. The incident created what Governor Wes Moore termed a global crisis that immediately blocked off most shipping to the Port of Baltimore, a critical hub that handles over 52 million tons of cargo annually, including more than 847,000 vehicles. The closure of the waterway carried a staggering economic price tag, initially estimated at a loss of $15 million per day. The sheer force of the impact was calculated by experts to be between 27 and 52 million pounds force, dwarfing the thrust of a Saturn V at launch. The ship, which was loaded nearly to its 10,000 container capacity, suffered 13 damaged containers with two falling into the water. Investigations revealed the ship had experienced power outages in port and a complete blackout just before the collision leading the crew to issue a mayday call and drop anchor as an emergency measure. Meanwhile, the cost to replace the bridge is projected to range from $1.7 billion to $1.9 billion, with officials aiming for completion by the fall of 2028. Insurance losses alone could reach up to $4 billion, possibly making this the largest marine insurance claim in history. I-35W Mississippi River Bridge Collapse On August 1, 2007, at 6.05 p.m., Rush hour traffic crawled across the I-35W bridge in Minneapolis, when, without warning, the central span gave way. In seconds, 1,111 vehicles and 18 construction workers plunged as far as 115 feet into the Mississippi River and its banks. The disaster left 13 people dead and 145 injured, with cars stacked in twisted steel and concrete. Some scenes bordered on the miraculous. A school bus packed with 63 children from a summer camp ended up teetering against a broken guardrail, resting just feet from disaster. 20-year-old youth worker Jeremy Hernandez kicked open the rear exit and carried children to safety, a moment that turned him into a local hero. Elsewhere, a semi-truck caught fire, forcing rescuers to battle flames with hoses stretched from blocks away. Rescue efforts were rapid and massive. Within minutes, the Minneapolis Fire Department arrived, joined by 75 firefighters, 75 law enforcement units, and eventually 20 divers working through debris-filled currents. In just three hours, 93 people were pulled from the wreckage. To make recovery possible, the Army Corps of Engineers even lowered the river by two feet. The Navy later deployed 17 divers who worked around the clock for weeks until the last victim was found on August 20th. Investigators discovered the cause. The bridge's gusset plates, steel sheets just 0.5 inches thick, were undersized and unable to handle decades of added weight, including 578,000 pounds of construction materials on the day of collapse. Years of overlooked flaws turned into a deadly design failure. In the aftermath, Congress approved $250 million in emergency funding for Minnesota, 
while victims shared a $38 million compensation settlement. Additional lawsuits added $52.4 million more, and Jacobs Engineering, successor to the original designers, later paid $8.9 million. The I-35W collapse became a wake-up call for infrastructure nationwide, exposing the cost of neglect and the human toll of engineering errors hidden in plain sight. FIU pedestrian bridge collapse. On March 15, 2018, at 1.47 p.m., a brand new pedestrian bridge at Florida International University collapsed onto busy traffic along Southwest 8th Street in Miami. The 175-foot-long span, weighing 950 tons, came crashing down just five days after being installed. The tragedy killed six people and injured 10 more, while crushing eight vehicles beneath tons of concrete and steel. The bridge had been celebrated as a symbol of innovation, costing $14.2 million and backed by a $19.4 million federal grant it was designed to connect the FIU campus with Sweetwater across an eight-lane highway notorious for pedestrian accidents. Built using accelerated bridge construction, it was meant to last 100 years and even withstand a Category 5 hurricane. Instead, it failed before it ever opened to the public. Warnings had surfaced days before the collapse. Workers noticed alarming cracks at a critical joint, known as Node 11-12, but engineers dismissed them as non-urgent. Hours before the collapse, Crews were tightening steel tendons at that very node when the structure suddenly gave way. The National Transportation Safety Board later determined the cause. Design miscalculations that drastically overestimated the bridge's strength and underestimated the load on its joints. Victims ranged from an 18-year-old student, Alexa Duran, to local residents and workers like Navarro Brown, 37, who was on site that day. Lawsuits soon piled up. In 2019, Munilla Construction Management, the project's lead contractor, filed for bankruptcy, and later reached a settlement of up to $42 million for victims and their families. OSHA fined five companies a combined $86,658, while engineers faced harsh scrutiny for overlooking life-threatening flaws. Today, a replacement bridge is underway with a $14.6 million budget, expected to be completed by 2026. The FIU bridge collapse remains one of the most shocking engineering failures in U.S. history an unfinished promise that ended in shattered concrete, broken lives, and a painful lesson in accountability.